All right, ready? I pulled this demo back up for this next part. I want to teach you guys a little bit about the sample rate of a lab scope and where you can get yourself in trouble if you're not careful. This should be, this should be fi five microseconds between here and here. That's delta time is what? Five microseconds. So what are we doing with this sample rate is we're, it's a record point on the screen. I'm zoomed way in. You can actually see all of them. There's one right there, one right there. Kind of tough to see where that one's at, but I should be able to see the next one. That, that should be five microseconds right there too, from there to there. So all the little peaks in between the lines. Is yeah, the and the, yes, the idea with a sample rate is you wouldn't want your interval too far apart because if the interval's too far apart, then you're gonna miss some detail. If I drop this time base back down, let's go back down to five. Is this okay at five milliseconds time base? Is, is my sample rate okay? Yeah, yeah you, cause every time you see this waveform, it's a decent spike, it's okay. But is it okay on a 20 millisecond? No, no. it's very. Right, why is that? When I increase my time base, you will increase your scope interval you're not changing the sample rate, right? Notice my sample's still a thousand. What I'm gonna do using this scope, understanding how the zoom feature works, I'm gonna set this for detail. Detail, where's my repetition? Pause it. Use your buffer, zoom out. There's my repetition. And now I have the best of both worlds. But I needed to know how to do that. I, there was, they were totally different between the two scopes on how to zoom and use the features of it. My son um, wanted to thank you guys too, seriously, for letting me do this, what I'm doing right now. He's really learning a lot. Cause, well, he's being forced to edit. <laughs> Not forced to, I'm paying him. So it's actually a win-win because he's making money, um, but he's also learning. And these are questions that he's been asking me, like what we're covering right now. Like he's not quite sure, like he understands what we're doing because he sees like, you know, w when an injector is not firing, for example, in one of the last case studies we did, but the sample rate and the repetition and the detail and like what I told him was like, listen, Caleb, you really need to watch the class on this so then you can apply it to what you're doing now. And that's where you guys are now. And I know, I know while you're sitting here, sometimes this is tough. Sometimes this, this format is tough because you can't, see you don't have a perspective of when you need to know this or how to um go about doing it on the car and so caleb you just need to know this caleb is the opposite he's seeing it and what have i been telling him opposite of what i'm telling you caleb you need to sit in my class you need to learn this these aspects so then when you start doing it that's when it comes together and so Unfortunately, is it Ryan is not here um, who mentioned he's better out in the shop. We all are, but just know that you can't learn this out there. You have to do it in here first and then you practice it out there. So just an, an encouragement to you if you're feeling like you're kind of getting it, but you're not really. And, you know, you're kind of hanging with me. That's all I need. You don't have to have all your T's crossed and I's dotted right now. Okay, as long as you can understand these aspects of what I'm showing you when it comes time to working on the car, we're going to be good.